Welcome to this tutorial. We are focusing on a 10 mark crime question. This is from 2019, paper three, and it comes with a mark scheme, student answer, and an examiner report feedback. Now, on all three papers, there are 10 mark questions with items, so it is a really good idea to practice plenty of these styles of questions. A quick reminder of what the 10 mark with an item is, as it appears on all three papers. 15 minutes to answer, making sure that you're given two equally balanced paragraphs. Read the item carefully. This will provide the hooks and you need to make sure that you quote them in order to apply your knowledge for this answer. Um, also look for the question hooks too. This will give you further opportunity to show application of knowledge and a quick reminder there is marks for analysis and or evaluation in order to access those AO3 marks. This style of question has an item and it clearly states the item that they want you to use it. And they do that three times at the beginning, in the box and also in the question. So it is important that you do read this item carefully, read it more than once and in between reading it, read the question as well. And this will give you a really good idea about what the question is about and also gives you time to formulate your thoughts about how you are going to answer this question. Now, this question wants you to apply material from the item and give two reasons why crime reduction strategies may not be successful. The question gives you what you need to be looking for in the item. And this is the word after the two that is in bold. And we are in this case looking for reasons or more specifically reasons why crime reduction strategies may not always be successful. So our hook number one, our potential first reason, there are assumptions why and how offenders commit crime. Hook number two, which is our potential second reason, there are assumptions about what crimes it is important to reduce. And this item has a third hook, which is a potential third reason to choose from. There are also assumptions about the role or impact of the criminal justice agencies. Now, the mark scheme is also super important because it will give you some clues about what you could write about for each of these hooks. So if we think about hook number one, which was assumptions about how and why people might offend, this could be assuming that criminals are rational. That's the reason why. Um, and that might link into right realist and situational crime prevention. And then you need to write about why it's problematic. Or you could use that same hook to link to our left realist approach, the assumption that people commit crime crime due to being relatively deprived, marginalised or joining subcultures. Our hook number two, which is the assumptions about what crimes it is important to reduce. The focus here might be more on right realist and environmental crime prevention and why that's more problematic, because it tends to focus on minor incivilities or minor disorder to prevent more serious crime taking place. Or hook number three, the assumption of the role of the police. This could suggest the role of the police is to be tough on crime, which is another right realist approach. So now we've had a little bit of a look at the item, the question, and also the mark scheme. A bit of an idea about how you might structure this paragraph. Now, your paragraph really should include the item, knowledge about what the hook is, three keywords and studies and theories, application of the item, link back to the question, do you use the word of the question to show that you're answering it, and analysis and or evaluation to get you AO3 marks. Now, there is no hard and fast rules about how to structure this paragraph and whether your item hook should be at the beginning or at the middle or at the end. And as long as the item is there and your answer is drawn from that um, item hook, um, then that should be credited. However, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to give you an example of a paragraph and it shows you how the answer to this question and the item hook in my student answer is right at the beginning. So looking at the student answer, you can see right at the beginning that they start with the item hook and this links then the knowledge about the crime prevention strategy. So they're linking it into Wilson and Kellen, right realist and their idea about zero tolerance policing and broken windows. They also give some examples of 
the behaviour or the crimes that are sometimes classed as minor incivilities and um, drinking and smoking and the assumption that tackling these crimes through zero tolerance policing or foot patrol policing will help turn society back to the good old days and this is important when we come to explain why these strategies might not always be successful. And it's at this point that we get to the main part of the answer why these strategies are not always successful. And this student states a number of issues with the crime reduction strategy that she identified from the hook, such as ignoring the main causes of crime, that this style of policing cannot be universally applied. When you use this style of policing, zero tolerance policing, it could often create a feeling of being marginalised. And what they do do is this really lovely analysis because they compare right realist ideas to left realism here and the over focus on working class street crime, which often ignores crimes of the powerful, such as corporate and state crime. So overall, this paragraph has a really good understanding of a crime prevention strategy or a crime reduction strategy. They applied sociological theory and examples of crime and more importantly, can identify some reasons why they're not always successful with some lovely analysis by comparing right and left realist. Now, checking out the examiner comments. Now, the examiner comments appear after every exam series and they have a summary of how each question was answered generally. And you can gain really good insights to what the examiners were looking for and they are available on the AQA website. Now, you can see that this question was less well answered, which is a shame, really, as now we know exactly what it was asking for. It's a really interesting question to get your teeth into. Many students failed to develop any application. This application came from the item and many students failed to use the item hooks and also failed to identify the crime reduction strategy. Or they simply just described the strategy without identifying why they might not be successful. Now, looking at what the best answers did, they did use the item to identify the assumptions that crimes prevention strategies are based on, whether it was left or right realist, and explained why they weren't successful. And finally, the crime prevention strategies that were popular in being identified were our right realist target hardening and zero tolerance policing with reasons such as criminals are not rational displacement or largely focus on street crime. So to summarise, please make sure that you are reading the question and the item at least twice before answering. Highlight and annotate to organise your thoughts. You must apply the item to score higher than 3 out of 10. If you do not make explicit reference to the item, you are going to be stuck in that bottom band, despite how good your knowledge might be. Ensure that you explain your points linked to all parts of the question, offering either analysis or evaluation for those special AO3 marks and you can do this by practicing lots of past exam paper questions or question banks. So massive thank you for watching, all the links are below. This video was answering a 10 mark from an item from Crime 2019. Um, I have even put down at the points below um, a link to the AQA assessment resources which is your past papers, mark schemes and examiner reports. Also, other videos that you might find useful. And also, there is a Quizlet set that I came across, which was about Wilson and Kellen and some of the more finer details about their research, which I thought was quite interesting. So I've popped that link down there for you to have a little bit of a look at. Um, and there's also some links to the Hexit Teacher and some other websites for you to have a look at. So massive thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, stick them in the comments below um, and have a fantastic day. Bye.